This video works through an exam question on probability. The question we're going to look at starts off with Emma visiting her local supermarket every Thursday to do weekly shopping. What we're interested in is the probability of whether she buys orange juice or not and the probability that she buys bottled water or not. And we've got a table here that gives us the probability is that she buys orange juice, which is denoted by J, and the probability she buys bottled water, denoted by W. This means that J dash means not buying orange juice, and W dash means not buying bottled water. So our first task for three marks is to fill in the gaps on the table. What we're doing here is showing that we understand mostly the idea that probability adds up to one and also just piecing together these different probabilities. So the first thing we do is we look at the table and we see if there's anything that we can put in straight away. And the only thing that we can really immediately put in would either be here or here, wouldn't it? Because we know that these totals have to add up to one. So firstly then, if we've got 0 0.65 as the total here, then that means it has to add up to 1, so we can put 0 0.35 in here. We know that this total for the row here has to add up now to 0 0.35, so we can place 0 0.2 in here. We now know that this column total has to add up to 0 0.30, so we can put 0 0.10 in here. This row total is 0 0.65, so we can put 0 0.55 in here. And we probably already knew from the beginning, as we had to add up to 1 for the row total, that this was 0 0.7 but we now have the column total to confirm that. So there we are, completed table. Have a good look at it, make sure that you're confident as to why we filled in what we filled in there. Right, we'll have a quick look at the mark scheme. You can see they're all B marks here, and you can see where the marks come from. Just filling in some of those gaps there gives you the two obvious ones at the beginning that we could have done straight away. You get the first B mark for, and then the second two B marks are the ones that required a little bit more working out. But fairly straightforward opening three marks. Okay, for the next question we're looking at finding the probability that on any given Thursday, Emma buys either orange juice or bottled water, but not both. So looking at our table, we can see here that the probability she buys orange juice and bottled water is this 0.55 here. So all we're looking at is the probability she buys orange juice but not bottled water, 0.15, or the probability that she buys water but not orange juice, 0.10. So we can simply add those two together. If we have a quick look at the mark scheme, it suggests that so here, they're looking at the probability that she buys water and not juice, which is 0 0.10, and the 0 0.15, the probability she buys juice and not water. So fairly straightforward two marks. Just think, try and be clear about exactly what's going on here. Take it a step at a time. So either orange juice or bottled water, but not both.
So for the next question, we're looking at the probability that the events J and W are not mutually exclusive and the probability that the events J and W are not independent. So obviously here, it's important that we understand exactly what's meant by mutually exclusive and what's meant by independent. So if we deal with mutually exclusive first, well, what that means is that we can't have J and W. That if J happens, W can't happen. If W happens, J can't happen. It's a bit like, is there any rainfall on the day? Isn't there any rainfall on the day? It's that sort of thing. So all we need to prove really is that we can't have J and W. So it would be enough just to state that J and W happens. And you can see on our table here that it happens here. And if you just write J and W equals 0.55, that will be enough. If we look at the mark scheme, you can see several other ways that we could show. The probability of W or J is 0.8. The probability of W and the probability of J is 1.8. Three, five. So you can see the difference of 0.55 here. But you can see, as suggested, that just stating this is enough. And here we see another way of looking at it. That if we add these two up, it comes to 1.35, which is greater. Um, again, is what is greater than 1, isn't it? So it's impossible. So for part B, we need to show that... The events J and W are not independent. Well, if they were independent, then the probability of buying juice would be unaffected with water being bought. And similarly, the probability of water would be unaffected by juice being bought. The formula we need for this is our given formula. It would be the probability of buying juice, for example, given that water is bought. And the formula for that is the probability of juice and water, so it would be that one, over the probability of the given part. So if we're looking at the probability of juice given that water is bought, it would be over the probability of water being bought, so it would be the whole of that. If we did it the other way around, water given juice then again it would be the probability of water and juice, but it would be over the probability of water, because that's the given bit. So it's out of that. So all you need to do is set up that formula and show that it's different to the probability of either juice or water, depending on whether it's juice given water or water given juice. So we'll have a quick look at the mark scheme so that can clarify that. The first example is water given juice. So it's probability of water and juice over the probability of juice. And you can see there that the probability of juice is 0.70. And then what we need to do is, well, we're looking at the probability of water given juice. Is it the same as the probability of water? No. And that's enough to prove they're not independent. If you were proven they were independent, then maybe you might need to prove this one as well to show that they both work. But that's enough for proving they're not independent because you have this contradiction straight away. And three marks for that. Question in total then. Two marks for the second part, for the independent part, and one for the mutually exclusive part. OK, the final question looks at a different problem. Reese visiting the supermarket every Saturday to do his weekly shopping and he buys milk, cheese and yoghurt. And with these probabilities, we can assume on this occasion that they are independent. We're then being asked to calculate the probability that on any given Saturday, Reese buys none of the three items. Well, that first one's fairly straightforward. So for the first one, we simply look at not buying milk, which is 0.15, times 
times not buying cheese, which is 0.4, because remember these are all 1 minus for not buying. If he buys cheese, it's 0 0.6, so it must be 0 0.4 if he doesn't buy cheese. There's only two options, aren't there? Times the probability of not buying yogurt, which is 0 0.45. So that's the first part for two marks. Exactly two of the three items. Well, for exactly two, you've got he buys milk and cheese, or he buys milk and yoghurt, or he buys cheese and yoghurt. So you have three different probabilities to work out here. So the first one, if he buys milk and cheese, would be... 0.85 times 0.6, but then it means not buying yogurt, so that would be 0.45. If we then do the same for buying cheese and yogurt, or for buying milk and yogurt, and add the three together, we'll get the probability for three marks. I'll let you finish that off. So have a go and I'll show you the mark scheme in a second. Okay, here's the mark scheme. So for the first part, as suggested, it's these three probabilities we multiply together. And there's the answer. Two B marks for that method here showing these and then the correct answer for the second one. For the third part, again as suggested, we've got those three probabilities to add up. So we add them all up there for two marks and then get the answer here for the third mark. It's giving here alternatives, but that would seem the most straightforward way of thinking about it.